Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Today, we're going to talk a bit about intuition. I'm not sure if uh, uh, we will be doing a recode or not today. We'll see how we go. But I think what we're going to cover today is uh, more important uh, in some aspects for some of you there than just recode. So, so very, uh, very excited about that. So can I ask, how many of you feel that you're intuitive? Uh, you know, give me a yes if you feel that you have an ability to connect into your intuition, you know what it is, you know how to do it, and you you orient from that place. Or how many of you would like to get better? You know, uh, this morning I, I covered it. I'm doing um, some free sessions for a, a group at the moment, and uh, I covered a, a really cool exercise. And I realized it's one I haven't done in this group for probably close to a year maybe i've done one this year at some point but uh, talking about intuition so for me intuition is a new mode of operation a new way of being see uh, many of us uh, we struggle with with making decisions uh, have you guys ever got to certain decision points in your life and you have to do the whole cons on one side pros on the other side and you come to a situation where you know basically it's what's well, six one half a dozen the other. Ever heard yourself saying that? Well, I'm screwed if I do, screwed if I don't. You know, they're both good options. How do you know which way to go? Uh, and then have you ever found yourself uh, in situations where, uh, hey, Lisa, and, uh, and maybe you make a decision and you second guess yourself or you're not sure if it's true. So what would it be like to have a new mode of operation where you can, without any doubt, connect to your superconscious field, to your real innate understanding, and be able to know exactly what decision to make? I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. Because it's, it's, it's very simple. It's very easy to do. And it's all about being in a true choice, OK? So in order for us to understand what a true choice is, we must define it, okay? A true choice is creating or going along with creating something that you love. So only one reason that you desire something that you love it. Does that make sense? That's the only reason. Why, why are you creating that? I would love to see it created. You don't need any other reason than that is what you would love to see created. Now, usually there's, there's quite a few ways that we, we actually create ineffectively. And, uh, you know, I've got a um, long list. I've summarized them down a little bit. So I'll, I'll cover a few of the main ways um, that we, we make choices ineffectively so that we can, we can do a really cool process today. Okay. So the first one is reaction. Write this down. You're not in a true choice if you're in reaction. Reaction is when you're only doing something because of something you didn't want. Reaction. Okay, reaction. It's a very, very important one. So a lot of people start a business only because they hate their job. And they realize that a business is just a different version of a job. So you're just, you know, you're just the boss you hate. <laughs> and so a lot of people go, oh, I don't like this. So I'm going to do that. Reaction is very temporary. Many times people who want to uh, have a better, uh, you know, start a, uh, uh, a better health journey, they, they say, oh, I can't fit these trousers anymore. You know, oh, you know, it doesn't feel good. So they react to that and they say, well, I'm going to go to the gym. So they go to a gym and then as soon as their trousers feel better, they fit, they fit a little bit nicer. They go, oh, well, cool. Now they, now I've finished. So then they stop doing what they were doing. So it's short-term bursts because as soon as the pain isn't there, they stop. Okay, that's reaction. Number two, indirectness. Type in indirectness. Indirectness is what you really want is this, but you go for this. I once uh, had a coaching client. I was working with him, and I couldn't understand why he kept on getting so annoyed at his business. And I said, what do you actually want your business for? He said, mate, the whole reason I started this business is I wanted to spend more time with my kids. I said, oh, okay, so what's the business about then? Well, the business is just to do that. 
So here I was helping him try to build a big business and make all this money. And he didn't want that. He wanted this. As soon as we chose a true choice, he wanted to spend time with his kids. He halved the amount of money that he was making in his business. He halved the amount of problems. He took only the clients that he loved and he doubled the amount of time he had to spend with his kids. And he was way happier. You see what I'm saying? It, what he really wanted was the time with his kids. But what he was choosing to get there is he thought he needed to build a big business, make all this money, employ all these people so that he could have time to do it. He was just going the long way. He didn't love the business. Does that make sense? What he wanted to do was this. Who's with me on that? Well, a lot of us do indirectness. You see, we go the wrong. We must get in the true choice. You cannot work in the superconscious in reaction. You cannot work in the superconscious with indirectness. The next one is consensus. Consensus is when you have to go and ask everyone else what they think you should do. So instead of you choosing your end result, you go talk to your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your, your dog. And you find out what all of them want. And then what they say is you go, well, based on everyone's opinion, who I think are smart people, this is the decision I'll make. Consensus. Consensus. You're not in your own truth. It's actually a setup so that if you fail, well, you can say everyone else thought it was a good idea too. So you don't have to be wrong on your own. It's not a true choice. You cannot work in the superconscious if all your choices are consensus. Number four, default. Default is when you choose to not make a choice and it's whatever shows up. You see, default, oh yeah, you know. You know, there's just the family business, so I just took it over, you know. Oh, well, that was just what was there, so I did. I don't really know what I want. Yeah, we'll see what shows up. Okay, this is, you can't work in, there's no tension in default, okay? Default is no way to be in true choice. You're not creating what you love, you're just waiting. You're letting the world push you around. And typically it's gonna push you to places that aren't that exciting, default. The next one is limitation, okay? Limitation is when your true choice is this, but you just say, oh, I only want this. <laughs> Super coach doesn't work when you give it a, a two competing, uh, different patterns. Oh, I want this, but it's not real. I'm actually coming from fear because what I really want is this. Does that make sense? <laughs> so this one is limitation. Limitation. Limitation is, is really big. So what have I covered so far? Uh, reaction, indirectness, default, consensus, uh, limitation, conditions. Conditions conditions is when you go for something but it must show up in a certain way so instead of saying i want a loving relationship you say i have to have a loving relationship with this person instead of saying i want a successful business you say it must be a successful business in this way you set conditions on it where you're just trying to control it okay and and again that's just not your end result it's just not what you really want. You really, you really want the loving relationship. If it's with this person, well, then that's cool. If it's not, that's fine. Can you see that with the with the relationship one? Uh, when you put those conditions on it, it it's really. And by the way, people who are wanting to create health uh, transformations uh, really struggle to get out of reaction. Right? They're just reacting to a condition. Uh, okay, so th there's a couple more, but I think you guys get the theme. One of them is, is someone that uh, only creates end results by, by getting signs from the universe. And, and you know, typically, uh, typically, a lot of people that are attracted to our work, um, they, they give away their power to a sign. And I'm going to explain the better way to do it today. Um, but signs, signs from the universe are not a way to be in true choice. You know, in fact, I was talking to a colleague yesterday about this, uh, and they were, they were indecision. And then this random thing happened to pop into their awareness. So that's what made their decision. And, uh, this is a very, a very, uh, powerless way 
to to orientate to the world and there's some there's some books like the Celestine prophecies and others that I I don't agree with uh, you know just random occurrences um, somehow making your decisions by the end of today those of you who are a bit iffy on this last one go I don't know Chris I really do believe in that by the end of today I'm going to give you just a better working model and and this is because what I've seen is uh, signs are so vague and very, very, very difficult. People love them when they say, I got this sign and then it turned out well, but they hardly ever tell you all the stories about when they got a sign from the universe. There was a triple nine on a number plate and then it turned out terrible. <laughs> uh, does this make sense, everyone? Yeah, so they, they don't really talk about the times and then the sign, you know, anyway. So, all right, cool. So we wanna be in a true choice. So in order to be in true choice, you must understand that you have three different uh, brain centers. Uh, sorry, thanks for putting that, Tricia. Uh, the, the eighth one is, uh, there's actually eight that I normally summarize. I'm just doing it uh, in the moment. The eighth one is when someone is trying to resolve a negative belief about themselves. So they might believe they're unworthy or um, they might believe that they are uh, not good enough or don't belong. That's the eighth. One. Um, but I've covered this in the in many of the courses. That was just the quickest summary I've ever done on those. Now, you have three different intelligence or brain centers in your body. Okay. So we all know about the one in here, our brain. We also have a heart brain and we also have a gut brain. Does that make sense? So we have three brain centers, really. They all have a ton of neurons um, there and they're all very intelligent. Okay. Now, your, your gut is going to do uh, and give you uh, intuition based on safety. Your heart is going to give you intuition based on growth and what you should do to grow. See, as an organism or as a cell, there's only there's two main things, safety and growth. Uh, your brain, unfortunately, is, is the weakest part of intuition. And when we're working in the field, we're much better off using uh, the other centers in our body. OK, so I'm, I'm going to teach you how to do it. So stick with me, especially those of you who uh, maybe know a little bit about intuition. By the end of today, we're really going to have you in a really interesting place. OK, so uh, to do this, we're going to do a little bit of an exercise. And, and here's the exercise. OK, here's the exercise. I want you all to remember a time that you really felt just in love with life, in love with what you're doing. You felt it was true for you. It was easy. It was flow. I just want you to pick a time. Might be your wedding day. Might be, uh, you know, spending time with your family. It might be a business. It might be, it might be something. But I just want you to pick a time that everything felt good. Type in a number one when you've got that. I just want to make sure I see at least, I don't know, 100 ones pop in just when you've picked a time that you love. Don't overthink it, doesn't matter. Just one, you know, I really love, that was a really beautiful time. Could be a holiday, vacation, could be, could be whatever. I just want you to find a time. Just type in number one. Some of you might've been on my session earlier today. I have done this one earlier. So you get the repeat. How good is that? Okay. So what I want you to do, we're going to do an exercise. It's about, there's five steps to this exercise, okay? And it's going to be very important. So I'd like you to get a pen or paper if you don't have one or, or um, get the notes section ready on your phone. You can use the notes section here if you like as well. Uh, Word document uh, or, you know, but I'd like you to be able to write some things down in a second. Oh, you're not missing out, Tricia. It's just just some some free ones. Nothing, nothing like what we go into. Just some basics. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have you close your eyes, okay, and I want you to imagine and uh, re-experience that moment. That's all I want you to do for the first time. Okay, so just close your eyes. Step back into that moment 
and re-experience it. What's it like? What are the sights, sound, taste, smells, everything? How did it feel? That's it. Just go back there and experience that moment. As you're experiencing it, I want you just to notice what you're doing in order to experience it. Where is your attention in your body? What does it feel like? Where do you feel it in your body? And how would you describe that feeling? When you're ready, open your eyes and I'd like you to write down what did you do and how did it feel in order to go into that moment? I'd love for some people to type it into me. I'd love that. It feels vulnerable. So where did you feel it? How did you feel it? What was it like? Imagine, felt it in my upper heart area, my heart, yeah. And what was it like in your heart? Warm. Okay, you're in Hawaii snorkeling, but I want you to tell me, how did you just access that? Close my eyes, felt it in my heart. Smile. Do your best to explain it. Thanks, Kerry. Yep, yep. So I want to know how you went there. Not what you did. I want to know the physical things you did to be able to recapture that. It's very important. Very important. How did you do it though, Sharon? I want you to describe. It's going to be very important for what's coming next. Okay. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the same moment. Okay. But I want you to have even more detail. As you're going into it this time, I want you to observe how your body is, how your focus is when you're in it, okay? So we're going to go into it. We're going to add more detail. But this time, I want you to become conscious of how you're doing it. Does this sound good? I want you to become conscious of how you're doing it, what your process is, to experience what you love, a moment you love your truth, okay? So if everyone's ready, I love we've done step one. Let's go a bit deeper. This time I want you to really start experiencing it. So close your eyes and remember the moment again. That's it. And now add more detail to it. Who are the people there? What are they doing? What are they saying? What do they sound like? What are the colors of their eyes, their hair? What is going on? Just what are the smells? Really build it up this moment. Remember it. And then observe yourself. What are you doing in your body, in your stomach, in your arms? What is your body doing? How does it feel? Go into this moment and observe and notice how it feels. Spend some time here in the moment observing your body. Where do you feel certain sensations and what flavors are they? What is it like? Okay, when you're ready, open your eyes and give you write out, make it conscious, write out what it's like for you when you're experiencing a moment you love. Nice. Where do you experience that nothingness? Is it an open, focused nothingness? Tingling in your body, smile. Yeah, great. Really, really build this mental model for me. It's going to be very important with what we're about to do. Very important. Inner smile. Nice. I like this. Thanks, Kiara. I love it. Please make sure if you're typing in notes here and you want to keep any notes at the end, before the end, make sure you've taken it off Zoom because they will disappear. Just so you know. But I really appreciate you guys uh, typing it in. 
Okay, so that's good, good stuff. Full of love, where do you feel the love? Tears of joy, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, so before we go on to the next step, just a couple things, just a couple things. Where was that memory? Where was it? Someone said in their heart, in their heart, in my head, where was that memory? Now, as we all know, our body is, is made up of atoms. We know that atoms, if we keep on breaking it down, uh, and we break it down, we break it down, we get the smallest unit of what we're made up of, you know, our DNA, DNA turn into atoms. When we look at it, it's a probability field. There's nothing there. If you pull apart your brain, which is this, like, or your heart, you see physical matter. You, there's no memory there to see. So I want you to know, just for a second, <laughs> before we get into the next thing, you just tapped into your superconscious field. The past doesn't exist. It's just a field structure that's just there that you've tapped into, which I think is pretty cool. You literally just were able to read off a energetic signature floating in nothingness. <laughs> now that's pretty cool, isn't it? Isn't that what you just did? Didn't you just have to read off an energetic signature floating in nothingness? You can't tell me that that's actually in your heart. Where? It's in the field surrounded you. By the way, if you can read the past, you can read the future. The challenge with the future is it's a multiverse of different timelines that haven't manifested yet. So the better way to put it is you, you can tune into um, certain choices on the timeline and notice how they feel. So what we get to do, what you've just learned, and we're only halfway through, you've just learned how your body reacts when it's something you love. Type in a yes if that's true. You just learned how your body reacts if it's something you love. Okay, so if you're making a choice in the future and you're setting a timeline point in the future saying this is what i'd like to create do you think that you could tune into that point and notice how your body is and get a read if it's something you love oh now you're starting to see where we're going with this okay Someone said, maybe, of course you could. It's the exact, your body's going to tell you if it's something you love or not. Okay, so let's keep building this model, hey? Let's keep building this model. So let's do something different. Let's do something different. Let's, let's find out how our body feels when we're in reaction. Does my, inter, does my voice keep dropping out? No, my voice is fine. Oh, that's a shame, Holly. Uh, Holly um, says that it's fine. Fine. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I'm glad it's. I'm glad it's fine for most of you. Okay. So what we're going to do is, I want you to imagine what it's like to be in reaction. Maybe a time you were reactive. And then you, you know, you went and set out on a different path. Okay. So just, just close your eyes and just step into what it's like to be reactive in a moment of reaction or make it up and feel your body. Where do you feel reaction? Open your eyes. Is it different? Ah, look at that. Okay, don't just tell me where you feel it. Go into it again when you're ready and really experience reaction. What is it like? Is it a burning feeling? Is it a flowing? How does your body tell you you're reacting? Just go in there, experience reaction. 
Where is it? How does it feel? Where's your focus? What's your face like? How is it like? Ah, that's interesting. Look at all of this that's coming in, by the way. Hmm. 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 Okay, so now let's remember, close your eyes again. Now let's remember that moment. Go back into the moment where you felt love, the moment you loved, and experience it again. What's your body like? Who's there? What's it like? Create it again. Go back there and notice what it's like. Okay. Who's learning something right now? You have a natural sense and a natural communication system from your body, not from this thinking brain that only started when you were seven years old, from your body that will let you know whether a choice is in what energy. Okay, who can think of a time they just felt abundant? They just felt rich and abundant. Who can remember a time they felt rich and abundant? Okay, great. If not, let's make it up. I want you to tune in, okay? How does it feel rich and abundant? Tune in. Feel it, notice it, what's rich and abundant. Get the taste and the flavor. When you've got it, let me know. Is it different to love? the moment you loved. Yes, it is. It's different. Is it different? Very different. Cool. See, we have an absolute, yeah, Jesse, don't notice. Go into it. Really feel abundance. We need to become fluent in the language of our body. Does that make sense, Jesse? We need to become fluent in the language of the superconscious. I know, I know, I keep seeing you pop, pop, pop up because we, we had such a good conversation, the scale up. Yeah, well, remember a time you felt like you had more than enough. Abundance is more than enough. Uh, abundance by definition is when you have more than enough so you could feel abundance of food. <laughs> Abundance of time, right? Abundance of air. More than enough. That's the feeling. Okay. And so when you go into it, allow yourself, allow yourself to do that. We're going somewhere with this, so stay with me. All right, next one. Can you all remember a time you felt scarcity when you didn't have enough? There was not enough to go around. Can you feel scarcity? I want you to close your eyes, go into scarcity. How does scarcity feel? What does your body do with scarcity? Okay. You should be able to start getting this pretty fast. So we have so much more than a thinking brain. Level one of intuition is learning how to use the other two binary systems in our body. Binary response systems, meaning it just tells you what it is. Okay. So if you were to make a choice, okay, 
and you ask yourself, how would it feel to have that? You must have a fluent understanding of how you feel so then you can match it up to that, what that end result's gonna be like. So you can know if it's a true choice or not. Hmm. Match the feelings up. So didn't you just make a description of what it's like when you're in scarcity? Yes? Did you guys all just write a description of scarcity? Did you guys just write a description of reaction? Did you just write a description of abundance and love? Well, what if you wrote a description of what it feels to feel safe versus unsafe? What if you made sure you understood how it feels when you're feeling gratitude versus feeling uh, judgment? And so what if when you were making a decision, you could step into the end result and you could literally experience that end result. And then you could look consciously and match how that feeling is matched up. And then instead of making a decision based on your conscious thoughts, you get to make a decision on what you love. What if, and let me ask you, what would life be like if you could become so conscious of your intuitive hits that you get that you stop missing them. Doesn't this sound like a good thing? See, I believe, you know, we, we offer people to buy things in our business. Here's how I would like it to be, okay? In the future, this is what I'd like to say. I'd go, hey, well, just step into it. Does it feel right? Does it feel true for you? And they got that step into it. Yeah, it feels like I'd love it. All right, well, let's do it. See what does it feel like? Or oh, feels it feels stressed. Well, let's not do it then. That's how it should be. Instead of you know, uh, should I do it? Should I not? Ah, well, just experience what you know what I'm saying. Is we we need to do this. So here's my little challenge to all of you: is I would love you to to really take this on. I'm uh, I'm in the. I'm in the end result of building out an intuition workshop. That's why I'm teaching this a little bit. I'm building out an intuition um, three-day course. And, and this is going to be a big part of it. Is It's really, it's not much more than this for the, the beginner part. Because step one of intuition is being able to know what the field is saying to you, but without you trying to rationalize it. You see, by becoming so conscious of the intuitive hits that you're getting, that you go, oh, okay, if I follow on this, this is following abundance. Oh, if I follow this, I'm actually in scarcity. That, that's actually me coming from scarcity. That's not the right choice. Oh, this is actually me coming from fear. I'm not going to do that. Because see, sometimes you get faced with decisions, right? Like, let's say it's a decision to invest in a new business opportunity, okay? Let's say, and you look at it, and it's a lot of money. But how do you know? You're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. How do you know that you doing it is, is not you just coming from a place of not good enough? Or if, if you say no, you're actually coming from fear. How do you see that? See, maybe you go, well, I'm going to do it. But you're really coming from a, well, I'm not good enough, so I'm going to prove how good enough, uh, good enough I am. Or the other option is you say, well, I'm not going to do it. And maybe you're coming from fear or vice versa. Do you see what I'm saying? You can overthink it. And does anyone here suffer from analysis paralysis? You can think about it and look at it and go and go. Well, look at the end of the day, your body's already told you what this end result's going to be like. Yet we're just not fluent in what it's saying. We haven't worked out the subtle difference between fear and not good enough. You see? Who thinks this is pretty cool? Okay, so what you must do, okay, 
whenever you're making a decision, okay, step number one is you write down your end result. What is it that you really are choosing to create? Okay, so let's use the example of, um, you know, a, a, a vacation. End result, what you really would love, you go, you know, what would I really love? I really want to have, I really just want to feel relaxed, have time with my family. And, uh, you know, just, I just want to come back rejuvenated. Okay, all right, cool, cool, that's cool. So then step two is you step into it. You go, okay, cool, how does that feel? And you write down, it feels this, it feels this, it feels this, and you write it down and you really get the feeling of that end result. You go, I understand how this feels. And then you're looking up between two, two or three different choices, okay? So you, you've got your end result and you go, okay, I've got these three choices. You know, we could go camping, um, we could go to the beach uh, or, you know, whatever. We can go to the mountains as an example. And, and they all seem pretty good. You know what I'm saying? They all seem like good holidays, you know, like functionally, they're all the same, but you, you don't know, like monetarily, they're all the same. Functionally, it's the same. Oh, I don't know. So what you do is you ask your super conscious. So you've got the feeling of the end result. Then you step into the mountain one experience it, write down how it felt, experience it, write down, experiencing it, how does it feel, how does it feel, where do I feel it in my body, where's my focus, write that down, let it go, you step into the, into the camping, write down how it feels, experience, write it down, then you step into the, into the beach, you write it all down, and then you simply notice which one matches up to the end result the most. Does this make sense, everybody? And so instead of needing to think about it, you're using a different aspect of your intelligence. You're using your intuition. Is it good? Do you get it, Jeremy? I saw your question. Beautiful, brother, beautiful. Step one with intuition is being able to get your heart brain and your gut brain into alignment, okay? Get your heart brain and your gut brain into alignment. It's very easy to be able to do this for other people. See, when you do it for other people, you have a clean energy, Client of mine rang me yesterday. I worked one-on-one -on -one with him. Uh, and he's, he had a property, $10 million property he was going to buy. And he said, Chris, you know, I need a decision. I said, cool, tell me the end result. So he told me the end result. I stepped into it with him. I experienced it with him. I was like, all right, cool. I got the feeling. And I said, okay, send me the addresses of the two places. And I stepped into the end result of both addresses. I told him which one he should take. He's so stoked, happy as moving forward with his purchase today. It's much easier. Does that make sense? Because you're able to step into it because you're just reading the energy of the decision. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this in today is, uh, um, Joni says, is the gut brain like fear? No, no sa safety, safety, but fear would be there. Well, fear is really stopping you do something that could hurt you. So it all comes back to safety. Good question, though. Good question. Yeah, so you'll feel it down there, but it's always different. And you want to know because safety could be you. By the way, here's do you guys want a list? Do you want a list of some of the, uh, the things you should learn? Yeah, okay. You should learn a yes. You should learn a no. You should learn a love. You should learn a fear. Yes, no, love, fear, scarcity, abundance, safety, unsafety. That seems like a pretty good list. And you can see the opposites in it. If you knew those eight, did anyone get them? Safe, unsafe, fear, fear, was it fear and something else? Certainty, maybe fear and certainty. Now I'm making them up again, aren't I? 
Someone got them. I don't have a list. <laughs> yes, no, love, fear, abundance, scarcity, safe, unsafe, certain, uncertain. Yeah. You, you become so fluent in these. I know this, uh, I spent months going through uh, <laughs> with my, with my, um, some of my alchemy training. I went through months just learning, spending time just on different emotions and really becoming so uh, fluent in that one. So I knew it and I would get hits and reads on things as, oh, that's what that is. Ah. And so as you're making choices in life, this this rational try to make sense of everything brain is is it just can't compute all the variables and things but your heart field and your gut field can compute things like this and get hits a really great book to read is blink by malcolm gladwell that talks about just how much faster uh we learn uh through our heart than through our brain really good book really good book so I told you at the beginning I wasn't going to do a recode today, and uh, I, I think that it was uh, it was a good decision. I know a lot of people. Oh, I'm oh, hanging out for my recode, Duncan. What I would love you to to do with all of your choices and your end results, okay? You know, here's what I would love you to do: is I'd love you to really, really, really get associated to how your body responds when you're in a moment of just love. Does that make sense? When you're just in truth, in love. And then I want you to really get associated to that and then look at any choices that you're making and either adjust them so that they feel like this or accept that they already are. You should not have any choices or end results that are not in that feeling of truth or love. Does that make sense? Because if you're creating out of reaction, consensus, uh, indirectness, conditioning, limitation, or from a negative belief system, you will find that some of your choices don't feel so good. Can you even just feel like a choice based on reaction, how it doesn't feel anything like that? When I say love, love is a verb of enjoying it being there. Just enjoy. It's just, I was so enjoy, I was so present, I was so happy about it. I just love it. I love it. You know, I love riding motorbikes for no reason. I love it. I love that. You know, it's just a love. So when I do mine, I, I imagine myself on my bike, just me, just riding. I'm just in love. I just And if it feels like that, that's the right choice. You see, uh, when I use my wedding day as well. I use my wedding day. I remember my wedding day and just like crying, you know, just so like, yeah, you know. I love it. I just love it. I was just love. There was no, there was nothing else there. It's just that was it. Okay. And so you use that to uh, to educate yourself on how your body responds and reacts to a true choice that you love. You see. And so then you become fluent in your own body processes. And then when you tune into your current choices, you get to, uh, you get to make sense of it. So can you all appreciate now how at the beginning of this session today, I said, by the end of today, um, signs from the universe will become trivial to you. Because I know, as I said it earlier, a few people were like, hey, you know, I, I don't know, man, I love it. I find them to be too random. And just because a dove flew down and sat next to me or a crow turned up here, uh, you know, uh, I, 
I know what it's like. You're trying to think of think up a choice, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, you see it's usually an animal. You know, there's a oh, there was a squirrel, and so you search, you go to Google, spiritual meaning of squirrel. <laughs> oh, squirrels about. Uh, capturing stuff and holding on to them. Oh, I shouldn't spend my money, <laughs> you know, or you're there and, you know, in Australia, there's a kookaburra, right? And it's just, it sounds like it's laughing and it's a bird. Uh, and you, you know, so you're there and you get a kookaburra, oh, laughing. Oh, well, I should do more things that are joyful. You know, it's just, it's just random, you know? And so I, I 100% believe the universe is communicating um, to us. However, I added it, I put it to the eight ways we create ineffectively because it's not predictable enough for me. Does this make sense? It's not predictable enough for me. Like I'll come across a dog all the time or a, a feather or a this or a that. It's not predictable enough. And so my challenge with it is how do I know if this time it was just a random event or if it was a sign. Does that make sense, everyone? So I so I want to appreciate that I'm with you. The reason why I can laugh about it because I'm also uh, spirit animal totem guides, like I do it too, you know. But, but when I'm making decisions, I trust that I am the universe, you see? And so I can get the read on my body if I start becoming fluent in it. Does this make sense? If I actually build the confidence in me and then I get so clear and I teach myself to become conscious of the different actions in my body, then I'm going to be able to get better reads myself. Okay. And, and so, you know, I know that it was a little bit, a little bit hard hitting when I brought it up before and I'm sure now everyone understands um what i mean and so so i because i want you to be powerful and i find it to be more powerful when it's like well that's that feeling for sure because i have spent time uh you know doing that right so i have spent time doing that and it's and that's it it's my decision